What are the products of each of the reactions shown here? Well, I'm going to show you the answers right now, and then if you wish, you can stay tuned afterwards for an explanation that I'll give as to why they are what they are. Here are the answers. And as promised, here is an explanation. Can we identify the products of each of these electrophilic aromatic substitution reactions? Let's start with the one on the top right here. I take this molecule, uh, treat it with sodium trioxide and H2SO4, sulfuric acid. What in the world does this reaction do? Well, what it does is it place, places a sulfonic acid group, that is an SO3H, onto the ring. Now, if this ring didn't have anything on it, uh, or that is, any substituents on it, then that predicting the product would be no problem. It would just be a ring with an SO3H on it. No big deal. However, it does have something on it. It's got this CH3, this methyl group right there. So where in the world does this SO3H go on this ring? Well, that is all going to, to depend upon what type of group an M methyl group is. A methyl group is an alkyl group. That is a hydrocarbon chain. Well, only one carbon long, I guess, but it is nonetheless one of those, which means that it is a donor. And we have to remember that uh, substituents that are donors are ortho para directors. We do that by remembering the uh, mnemonic DOPE. Donors make things go ortho and para, which means that the product of this reaction is going to be a mixture of the sulfonic acid group placed at the ortho position plus the para isomer. Now I would assume that the para would be formed uh, in larger amount than the ortho, but you will get both products. Let's look at our next one. These conditions, nitric acid, catalytic sulfuric acid, what do they do? They place a nitro group onto the ring. Where does that nitro group go? Well, it depends on the nature of the substituent that's already attached to the ring. What is an NR3? That is a uh, quaternary ammonium salt dangling off of a benzene ring. What kind of group is that? Well, that group is a withdrawer. What is a withdrawer? Well, withdrawer, we have to remember W equals M. Withdrawers are meta directors. So what that means is that this is going to place my nitro group in the position that is meta relative to this uh, substituent. Now we'll go to the next uh, reaction. The next reaction is exactly the same. It places NO an NO2 on the ring. Where does it place it? It all depends on the nature of the substituent that's already there. And NO2 is also a withdrawer. So we remember W equals M. So the final product is going to be the dinitrobenzene where the two nitros are meta to each other. Over here, we look at this reaction. This is an ethyl chloride treated with aluminum chloride. This is Friedel Crafts alkylation. Friedel Crafts alkylation places this alkyl group right here onto the ring. In other words, I'm going to get a CH2, CH3 chain dangling off of the ring. Where is that going to be? It all depends on what the nature is of this uh, pre existing substituent. Is that a donor or is it a withdrawer? Well, it's, a, it's actually a weak donor. So I remember dope. That means donors make things go ortho para. So I'm going to get as my product a mixture of the uh, ethyl group at the ortho position plus the para isomer. Now we get to this last one, which is really tricky. Let's take a look at our reaction. This is a chlorine stuck to an R group. An R stands for an alkyl group, that is some kind of hydrocarbon chain, carbons and hydrogens. It's got aluminum chloride thrown in there. That is Friedel Crafts alkylation, which means that it's going to place an R group onto the ring. Where in the world does it place it? Well, that's all going to depend upon the uh, nature of the uh, two groups existing here. I've got two benzene rings, and then I've got this stuff dangling off to the left, stuff dangling off to the right. What in the world is going to happen? Well, in order to figure that out, what we're going to do is look at the stuff that's not benzene rings and determine, are those things going to be uh, donors or withdrawers? Well, I have a chlorine. You might remember that it is a weak donor. And then I've got this ethoxy group. What kind of group is that? Well, an ethoxy group is a very, very strong donor. So I'll write strong D. Who wins between a weak donor and a strong donor? A strong donor does, which means that I'm basically going to place whatever the substituent is that this thing places ortho and or para to this guy. And this whole thing is just going to have to come along for the ride. Hopefully that makes sense. Now, because this group is a strong donor and is hence the winner in this battle, it wants to place the alkyl group at uh, the ortho position and give you one product and make a separate product in which it places it at the para position. You'll notice that these two uh, locations are the ortho or the positions that are ortho to this ethoxy. The para location is right there. 
However, the para location is already occupied by all of this stuff. So it can't place anything on the para location. So the only uh, location that it can put stuff on is the ortho, which means that the final product is going to be that.